Do you believe that we need to relook at the basic structure doctrine that there are that Parliament is sovereign as Jagdeep Dhankar says, and therefore the basic structure doctrine needs to be reviewed, relooked at? I think uh, I would put it another way. Fundamental rights chapter is part of the basic structure, mm -hmm. amongst others. Would you or I want the fundamental rights chapter to be diluted? The answer is obviously no. So let's understand one thing, and this is a matter of uh, some concern. The vice president, an erudite lawyer of his time, like all other constitutional authorities, mm -hmm. take, took an oath to uphold the constitution and the laws. The law declared by the Supreme Court in the Keshwananda Bharti case is the law of the land which every authority has to uphold. There are, the constitution recognizes that there is separation of powers. The role of the courts is to ensure that executive and legislative power is reviewed. That's the power of judicial review and kept in check. And, that, and part of the checks is that there should be no breach of the basic structure as pronounced in the Keshav Nam Bharti case. Having said that, we must not forget mm -hmm. that we, the basic structure has helped us in times of crisis in ensuring that the constitution is not revoked. Otherwise, I mean, if the basic structure didn't exist, you'd come along and like some of our neighboring countries, the constitution would be revoked on a regular basis. That is the whole purpose of this doctrine. I must also add that if in our democracy, mm -hmm. when we gave ourselves this constitution, the constitution provided separate roles for the legislature, for the executive, and for the judiciary. Those roles are cast under the constitution. And today, mm -hmm. to question that, to question the basic structure, is really questioning the basis on which this republic was founded. Uh, you know, A lot of thought went into giving ourselves this constitution. And it is, uh, and it is unfortunate. Mm -hmm that this is now being questioned by no less than authority than the vice president himself, as I said, a competent lawyer. You're, you're saying that, you're saying that the, that the constitution envisaged a clear separation of powers, but Biswajit Bhattacharya, the argument that the political class is making, and we'll come to them in a moment, <laughs> is that there are times when the judiciary appears to be taking over tasks that should be left to the legislature. So parliament is sovereign, is what Jagdeep Dhankar is saying, and therefore believes that we must review the basic structure uh, doctrine, because it expands the power of the judiciary, can lead to judicial overreach, and judicial oversight is leading to overreach in the case of parliament. Rajdeep, the fundamental concept of these two highest constitutional authorities, which mm -hmm. they have uttered, mm -hmm. is deeply flawed. Uh, perhaps uh, no, they didn't the have the time to go through Article no, no, 245 the of no, no, the Constitution of India. Let's be specific. Why do you believe that Jagdeep Dhankar is out of line? Because, because it flies on the face of Article 245. Parliament's lawmaking power is circumscribed by the provisions of the Constitution. The interpretation of the Constitution is the job of the judiciary. And in the NJAC case, the government has lost once, twice when the review petition was dismissed, and now, after from 2015 to rake up the issue while holding high constitutional posts and not before that, and in unison by the two highest authorities within the top five, mm -hmm. uh, I think this is total reckless no, disregard no, of Article 144 of the Constitution, no, but there are reckless those... disregard of Article 141 of the Constitution, and Basically, it is the job of the judiciary to interpret the constitution. Even a first-year law student will know. But if, so this if, kind of a poor but how, does, how does the appointment of... You see, I think where this has come from is that that entire NJSC judgment of 2015 of the National Judicial Appointments Commission judgment which the judiciary refused to accept, saying it would be a violation of basic structure. You've got the likes of Mr. Dhankar saying 
that how can judicial how can judicial appointments be part of the basic structure? Why should judges have primacy? No, no. You see, the basic structure is a proposition laid down by a 13 judge bench of the Constitution from 24th of April 1973 till today. Half a century we are going to complete on 24th of April. So that's the law of the land. Now, if you have to challenge that, you have to set up a 15 judge bench. And for the high constitutional authority to talk in this manner is very, very unfortunate. Let and I think this is tarnishing the image of India. That okay, let's the highest see. constitutional authorities are openly attacking the majesty and sanctity of the Supreme Court. They have not gone through Article 245. Article 141, Article 144. Let me bring in Mr. Reddy. Let me bring in Mr. Reddy. I'll come back to you, Vishwaji, uh, in a moment. No, no, Mr. Reddy, you... No, no, it is time to call a spade a spade. No, no, don't, don't be afraid. You I'm are one of the few channels. No, no, so therefore, don't be afraid. Hear me. The question is that when constitutional authorities, after occupying highest constitutional post, they themselves attack the constitution, whose creature they are, to say that parliament is sovereign. I, I'm sorry, parliament is not sovereign, nobody is sovereign, constitution is sovereign. Okay, and that's the line the of the day. The constitution is sovereign, yeah, parliament is not sovereign. I'll come to you, in a moment. And then, then just a minute, power sir. The power of the judiciary to interfere. You, you the made very strong comments. Parliament I, I think cannot, it's only parliament fair. Parliament cannot interpret the constitution. 